Hello everyone, this is Don Ferguson with the Appalachian Search and Rescue Conference and Integrated Geospatial Tools for Search and Rescue, or IGT for SAR. And I'm back with another video tutorial on using uh, IGT for SAR in ArcGIS for managing search and rescue operations. Uh, in today's video, uh, I'm intending this more of a demonstration video than actually an instructional video. And the reason being is I was uh, speaking with someone the other day and they had, they had mentioned that they shy away from using uh, ArcGIS or IGT for SAR, MAPSAR, um, in running a lot of their searches because oftentimes their searches are not very big uh, and they're over in, you know, within the first operational period and they felt like it took too much time to spool up uh, ArcGIS and IGT for SAR. Uh, so uh, they were uh, preferring not to use it uh, or at least not to use it on small searches. So what I'm going to do today is just kind of demonstrate some of the uh, some of the features of IGT for SAR that are focused on automating the workflows and speeding up uh, some of the workflows and, uh, and some of the ease, uh, some of the simplicity of, uh, of using the tool itself. So what we're going to do is, uh, so when I, in developing IGT for SAR, you know, I had a, a goal of, uh, of being able to show up on scene and get tasks written and printed or at least written uh, and prepared uh, in about 15 minutes. Uh, and that's a pretty lofty goal, if you, if you think about it. Uh, just about the time that you kind of gather information and, um, uh, and look at your resources and just kind of make some decisions, uh, you know, time quickly, quickly uh, rolls away. So uh, 15 minutes is a, is a pretty lofty goal. Um, so what I've got, what, I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to stop start or we're going to kind of step through a, uh, a small scenario uh, and uh, and if you can see I have a, a timer up here and uh, we're going to see how long it takes for me to create a number of tasks. I'm going to create about five tasks and we'll see how long uh, it takes to create these five tasks and uh, and I'm I'm pretty much starting from scratch. I do have ArcMap open. Uh, and my computer is booted, so um, so I am cheating a little bit because of that. Uh, and then I'll also say I also have a uh, I'm going to use an offline base map, and uh, it's just a USGS topographical map, and I've already got that uh, prepared. Uh, so which is what? In, in fact, this is a map that I've always had prepared because it's going to be in an area that we respond to frequently. So uh, it's a base map I had prepared, and that is. The only thing that I'm uh, preparing ahead of time uh, in this uh, in this example. So uh, as I mentioned, this is going to be a demonstration video, not an instructional video. But uh, so I'm, I'm going to go through them, some things pretty quickly. Uh, but I will kind of talk through them as best I can, uh, and I may be mumbling and stumbling at times because I'm trying to think about something that I'm trying to do on the screen uh, and talk to you at the same time, and I have enough trouble you know, talking and walking at the same time. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start my timer, and, uh, and we're going to see how long it takes to create uh, a couple of, uh, of tasks, tasks, task maps, and GPX files. So let me start the timer. So the first thing I need to do is create a new incident folder. Uh, so uh, I have the uh, SAR toolbox. I'm going to run the Create New Incident folder tool. Uh, and then I'm going to select a target directory, uh, and uh, I'm going to put that here in my searches folder, give it a name. Oops, 31A. All right, and then I'm going to give it a, a projected coordinate system. This is the one that we use for our area, so I have it under my favorites to help speed things up, and I'm going to go ahead and start that. So, again, what I did is, uh, because the uh, SAR toolbox is in the systems toolbox, it, it, it appears in uh, uh, the uh, the Arc Toolbox uh, when I open up ArcMap from from scratch. I won't ha I don't have to be in IGT for SAR to get that access to that SAR Toolbox easily. Uh, so what it's right, right, doing right now is creating that uh, new incident folder. It's going through and creating all the uh, data layers, all the featured data sets and the feature classes that go inside those featured data sets. Uh, and then once that's done, I'll open up. Uh, 
uh, open up the map file and uh, and being cre begin creating the incident. So for this incident, uh, the situation or the simulation is that a you know young boy uh, walked away from a campground, and we want to create some hasty tasks around that campground to search some of the linear features in the first within the first hour or a few minutes of uh, of him being missing. So all right, so that incident's been created. Now I need to open up uh, that incident. So let me go to to that location and open up the file. So it just opened up IGT for SAR. I'm going to go ahead and pull in my base map. And then I'm going to create some, uh, just add in some. Um, so let's see, my base map is here. And it's this Cooper's Rock one. So I loaded up my base map there. So now I'm ready to add in some information. So the, the boy was missing from this location here. So let me put in some details uh, just about the incident here. So let me edit this and open up the attribute table. So my incident name for today is, I'm just going to call it Cooper's Rock. And the incident number is what I named. And this is whatever you, you're, you use in your area. Uh, and that is all I need to do for right now. Uh, my map datum, is, it's, I've used my defaults, so that's all set. So let me enter in a little bit of information about our subject. We have one subject, and we'll just call, give him a name of John Doe, and I'm not going to worry about anything else for right now. Uh, so, uh, all right, so let me save those and stop that for a moment because I want to run the update domains. I'm still uh, using the update domains in IGT for SAR for right now uh, for a couple reasons that we'll talk about in another uh, video. So, all right, so that's been updated. So now I'm ready to uh, plot my PLS, uh, which is what we have here. So let me create features, create PLS. He's missing from there. So I choose my incident name my subject name and, uh, and that's all I need for right now everything else is uh, is good it's collected it's got the coordinates and the uh, already calculated for me from the attributes assistant so now I'm ready to create some hasty tasks uh, around this so uh, I'm going to create some hasty line tasks so select that uh, I'll just create I'm going to check this power line that runs through here and I need to go around the lake so we'll check along this power line to that location. Uh, this is a utility right away, and I'll call it the uh, campground power line. I'm giving it all my uh, features a name. We'll talk about this uh, on some of the other uh, tutorials. So let me also create one along this, another hasty task along uh, this power line. And you know, maybe we had reason to believe that the subject would have locked along one of these power lines for some reason. So we'll call this one entrance power line. All right, uh, let me also create a, a couple more tasks. So here's a trail and I want this trail search. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use the freehand tool to draw this one in. And we'll just trace this line down, following the trails best I can, close enough, people will get the idea, and into to that point. Uh, and this is a trail, and it's Scott's Run Trail. All right, uh, so let's do a couple more. I want to do uh, this road, just along the road to the entrance. So again, using the freehand tool, trying to stay as best I can on the road. Oh, that was a mistake. But I'll let the team know that I made a mistake there. And in fact, I can correct it. So that's a road. We'll call this entrance road for now. And let me fix my error there. By moving a couple of these guys down. This is taking up some valuable time, but it's worth it. All right, and we'll create one more. Oops, 
here to do uh, the road to the overlook area or to the messed up there let me create that again and we'll just do this loop in here All right, and that is a road feature, and that's the overlook road. You can call it something else if you need to. That's just the name I chose. All right, so I've got uh, about five different tasks there. Let me stop my editing, save edits, stop. I'm going to update a few things here. I'm going to update the uh, search area names. A couple features are created. Let me update my map layout, and this is going to calculate my map declination for me, or my mag magnetic declination. Now I need, now I'm ready to create the hasty tasks. So let's go to uh, create hasty lines. This is where it's going to pull in information from those features I just created into the assignments area. And that's done, and now I'm ready to edit some assignments. Uh, let me find where I put them. All right, so let's give these some planning numbers. And we'll talk about the difference between planning numbers and task numbers at some other time. That's all I need to do right now. All my the tasks actually have already been written for me. That's some automatic text that's already created, and we'll look at that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and save those and stop. And now I'm ready to generate my task assignment forms and maps. So let me select all those, select my appropriate directory, and run. So now it's creating the uh, it's, it's creating the task assignment forms. The, uh, creating the maps and creating the GPX files. It's a little slow right now. There it goes. In the first task, the second task. And it's using some of the default settings for uh, IGT for SAR. And the fifth one. All right, just done. All right, so pause that timer because in nine minutes and 11 seconds, I just created five tasks. So let's go look at those tasks. Uh, and I meant to have that open, but here are the tasks that were created. So those weren't there before, and I'm sorry that I forgot to open that folder ahead of time. I meant to, so you could watch them as they appear on the screen. But these. Um, these set of files uh, were just created as that uh, create assignment tool was running. So let's look and see what uh, what these are. So here's the uh, first planning number, and let me populate the data. So it took the information from the assignments and uh, and plugged it into uh, plugged it into the task assignment form. And these are PDF forms, so you can continue to you know, if you need to edit the information here, you can. Uh, but uh, um, or you don't have to. So, uh, but you have access to all the all the data fields on here. But so what happened is there's some built into IGT for SAR is some pre-formatted text, and I mentioned this in the uh, overview video the other day. Uh, but it takes the name of the feature uh, and the distant, the length of that feature, and the start and ending coordinates for that feature, and plug it into this text. So. Uh, you know, because we're searching uh, standard linear features, uh, pretty much what we want to do along those linear features is just kind of sweep just close to the sides of the trails or the power lines, the roads. Uh, so this is the text that is generated uh, for you, and it just kind of, and as I mentioned, just plugs in the information. So it. This task was written. Uh, it put in the planning number, the the mission number, or the incident name, uh, whichever you use, uh, the task map name, 
Uh, and then you can write in uh, later, you know, uh, you can fill in now once you when and so plans would make this information, pass it on to ops and ops would fill in uh, the rest of the f uh, of this information of the field team names and uh, field team member names and things like that. And then pass that on to uh, to or it, ops would do that and then and then give that assignment out. So uh, so that's really all we needed to do. So there's the task assignment form. Let's look at the, one of the task maps. So here is the task map for that same assignment. Uh, so it took the assignment. So this was the power line assignment, the campground power line. So the when you run the uh, create assignment task, or create assignment tool, it centers the map up on that assignment and highlights that assignment area and uh, and then prints the map at uh, and it used the default scale. This was built into the assignments and things like that and. All this other information is is printed on there. So uh, uh, so there you go. So there's the task assignment form and the task map, and then you also get the GPX file, uh, which is here. So we took within five minutes we created, or I'm sorry, within nine minutes, uh, just over nine minutes, we created five tasks, right? So you can imagine how long it would take to fill each of these tasks out by hand uh, and and have them ready to go. And keep in mind that not only did we create those five tasks, but we are also running our mission log uh, as uh, is automatically created for us. Uh, and so we have accountability. We have uh, the, a, 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 a log of the tasks that, we're, that we've written, uh, and, uh, and we can acknowledge when they have been assigned. Uh, and you know we also on our master map we have drawn in these assignments uh, that we've created so that is also being recorded so we can see that so again within nine minutes just over nine minutes we created five tasks uh, I think personally that that's a that's a pretty good uh, time period so you know if you account for the time that it would take for your computer to boot up and for ArcMap to load you know, you're pretty close to the 15 minute mark um, of at least generating the tasks, and then you still need, obviously, you still need to uh, print them out. So that's kind of what I wanted to demonstrate today, was just some of the uh, simplicity and, this, and automation and speed that you get with uh, integrated geospatial tools for SAR. So stay tuned for some more videos, uh, and I promise the next one will be an instructional video and not a demonstrational video, uh, and we'll go, we'll go through in a little bit more detail of... Uh, of how you create these tasks and and uh, and and enter in information into the different day later. So, thanks a lot for watching and uh, and stay tuned. See ya.